Brace yourselves. Your wish list is about to get quite a bit longer. Yeah. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. Yes, I'm in a completely different place. I'm actually in my office that's kind of next to my kitchen where you've seen a lot of my plant tours. Those are my shelves behind me. I just wanted to try something a little bit different because I'm really, 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 really sick and tired of the sound quality when I record in that room. So we're gonna try it in here today. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you like it. It's not as aesthetically pleasing, but so most of you may know that pretty recently I went on a trip to Thailand and on this trip to Thailand I had the absolute pleasure of viewing several different nurseries around the area where I was staying. And I've seen so many plants in these nurseries that haven't really hit the market yet so to speak. Either that or they were present, you know, they were on the market last year but they're now much easier to get than they were last year. So I thought why on earth am I not just making a video about the plants that I found and you know what's kind of coming up in 2020 because obviously I've seen them in all of these nurseries just ready to go. So without further ado here are my 20 upcoming plants in 2020. Just to give you a quick heads up if you're not a fan of yellow or yellow variants Irrigation, this is probably not the video for you as honestly if I could select like a theme of all the plants that I saw when I was out there that's kind of like up and coming this year the theme 100% is yellow there are other things as well of course not everything is yellow but a lot of it is kind of yellow so if you don't buzz off yellow if that doesn't do it for you you may not love this video without further ado let's just get straight into what I managed to find so the first up-and-coming plant in 2020 is the philodendron bipenifolium yellow by Pedophonium aurea, philodendron hammerhead gold, philodendron golden hammerhead, whatever it is called, it is going by a lot and I mean a lot of different names. So if you're wanting to look for this plant online very soon, you could, you, there's a lot of search terms there. That's like the best way I can put it. It's absolutely everywhere and it's going under different names. For now, I'm going to call it Philodendron Bipenifolium aurea. The best way I can describe this Philodendron is it's kind of like a Philodendron Florida ghost. The leaves are a little bit of a different shape, but instead of emerging white, this one actually emerges yellow. They're not massively expensive either. So on like the scale of price for rare plants, they're kind of towards the lower end. They're not super expensive. So when these do arrive on the market, Market, I would be surprised if I saw them sold for ridiculous price tags. They're kind of mid-range. So that's super awesome if you're looking for something a little bit on the more affordable end, but you want to add a bit of yellow and you want something new and fresh and something exciting and something that changes color as it grows. Very, very, very similar to that and not to be fully confused with that is the Philodendron Bipenifolium variegata. This plant is also known as the Philodendron Violin variegata. So if you're looking for it on the internet, that might be another service term that you might want to use. So this is similar to the last one. It is bipenifolium, only this variegation shows up more like a Florida beauty. So basically what I'm saying is the first plant I just showed you, you could kind of compare that to like a yellow version almost of a philodendron Florida ghost. This one is a lot more like a philodendron Florida beauty. So there's two different options there depending on which one you want to go with. This plant is more expensive than the last one, obviously because it's variegated. The last one isn't, so that automatically bumps the price up. The last time I checked, the prices on these would kind of the same price almost as the Philodendron Florida Beauty. So that is something to think about whether you're considering the Florida Beauty over this one. The next plant upcoming in 2020 is the Amidrium Medium Green Form. Now this plant surfaced on Facebook late last year and everyone kind of went a little bit crazy over it because they thought it was a Monstera and it is not. This plant was going around as Spider-Man Monstera so if you're wanting to search for it on the internet that could be a search term you might want to use. I don't know if that term is still used today. The cool thing about this plant and possibly the reason why people are calling this the Spider-Man Monstera is probably due to the way that the leaves emerge. So the leaves emerge and they emerge kind of kind of mosaic-like. They have a really cool dimension to the leaves when the leaves pop out. Oh actually, actually I have one right here, two seconds. I wasn't going to do this but it is here. Here, I can just show you, right? So the leaves look like this when they emerge. I just pull that there. So you can see there is definitely you know, a pattern on them. They're really, really nice and they're really easy to grow. I can tell you that much. They're really, really pretty plants. I like them. I do get the hype. I think this plant is going to be huge this year. In the same way that Raffidophora have kind of taken off this year, I think this is too. I think this is definitely going to be a thing. 
If that wasn't cool enough for you, the next up and coming plant in 2020 is the blue version of the previous plant. So that is Amidrium medium blue form. And it looks like this, because I happen to have both. I don't know if that's gonna throw blue on camera. Obviously, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I'm not 100%, I think it does. There's not really a difference between the two plants in terms of like growth, anything like that. I think the blue one is a little bit more expensive just because it's blue and who doesn't love a little bit of blue. If you collect blue plants, you probably know that it's not the easiest thing in the world to find blue foliage. So if you're looking for something like that, that is absolutely one to add to your collection. They're awesome, awesome plants. The next up and coming plant in 2020 is a piper and it's not yellow. <laughs> So there's one thing, it is Piper Sylvaticum. Now, this looks to be a very, very cool plant. I can't deny it. But in my experience, Pipers ship absolutely horribly. Nearly every Piper I've tried to bring into my shop just ships terribly. I'm talking like way worse than any big exotic anthurium or anything like that. They are easy compared to this guy. So I'm not sure how well that's going to go. I don't know how well that's going to be able to be imported to other countries from, you know, where it's been grown and sold on and how well it's going to ship. I think it's going to be popular, but I think people are going to report having issues with them, if that makes any sense. I don't think it's going to affect sales of them, but I do think it's kind of something to be aware of. But it does look really, really cool. And obviously this is just due to the pattern on the leaves and how generally awesome it is. I'm pretty sure this Piper actually trails, so that's a really pretty one to have if you're looking for something like that. The next plant I'd like to talk about is a plant that has been previously available. It does exist. It was obtainable. It just wasn't as obtainable as it is now. A lot more of these are coming on the market this year, and that is the Philodendron Glorious. If you don't already know, Philodendron Glorious is a hybrid of Philodendron Gloriosum and Philodendron Melanochrysum, and it is a very, very beautiful hybrid. Honestly, I think it could well be my favorite plant in the minute. I'm loving it that much. It's also a climber, so that makes it really easy to mount onto a pole, which these days for me is honestly a little bit of a plus because I really want to collect more plants, but I'm a little bit short on space, so I kind of have to start sticking things up poles and just kind of stacking them next to each other. It's not pretty, but you do what you gotta do, you know? Really, really pretty, reasonably tough as well, because Melanochrysum is reasonably tough, so that's really added something to the plan in terms of shipping. I can confirm they do ship pretty well, so if you're looking for another big heart to add to your collection this year, Philodendron Glorious is the one. Another house plant that is upcoming in 2020, but it has been around, but it's now getting even easier to obtain than last year and the year before, is the Monstera Thai Constellation. Now I know most of us kind of know what this plant is. I just kind of wanted to put this in here to let you know that a lot more of them are coming out onto the market. And I'm talking a lot. I don't know if the price is gonna start coming down too much just yet, but there will definitely be more on the market. A lot of us, I know I have, I've seen them a lot on the market already this year. Really, really big plants, really, really hardy. I featured one of these in my Easy Rare Houseplants video. They're absolutely excellent. They grow pretty fast, they grow pretty large, and the variegation is stable, which means it won't revert. It, you don't have to watch your plant, you don't have to snip it. So these are really, really cool plants if you have a nice big space that you'd like to fill in your house. I totally, totally, totally recommend them. I have two or three, actually. I have one right next to me at the minute that's huge. And then I have a smaller one through there in my living room and they're just amazing plants. Can totally recommend. The next up and coming plant in 2020 is the Philodendron Bobsy. Now, I don't personally think that this plant is everybody's cup of tea. I don't know if everybody is looking for this plant. I'm, I'm not really sure how this one's gonna go, but I can tell you that there's a lot of them that are going to come onto the market. And I can tell you that it's quite popular on Facebook at the minute. That's kind of what I can tell you. The leaves probably aren't everybody's cup of tea, but it's certainly gonna be something that is going to be popping up on people's Facebooks, people's Instagrams and the like this year. The price range isn't insane on them because probably because it's not variegated and it's just a new cool leaf form. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding them. I wouldn't have thought. I think they're reasonably obtainable. Next up, yet another plant that has previously existed, but now it's coming more onto the market. So now it should be emerging a little bit more. Not a lot, don't get me wrong. There's only a little bit more of this coming out. So this might still be a little bit difficult to get. And that is the Philodendron Red Emerald Variegata, also known as the Philodendron Strawberry Shake. Now then, this is quite a nice plant. It's not as pink as a philodendron pink princess, hence it's called strawberry shake, which would suggest if you think about a strawberry shake, it's probably a creamy pink, 
which is basically what the variegation looks like on this plant. Now, if you love your pink variegation and you really want to get in on the yellow trend, that's it's clearly coming, trust me, we got a lot of yellow in this list. But if you want to get in on that, but you're just not sure if you're going to dig it, this might be a really good one to add because the variegation on these plants can range from like a yellowy cream to a creamy pink. So if you're looking for something new and you want to add a little bit more warmth in with all your plants in terms of your variegation, but you're just not sure if you're going to dig yellow because not everybody does most people you know prefer white then this is absolutely one to go for i highly highly recommend it the next philodendron i have to talk about is not necessarily everybody's cup of tea either in the similar way that the philodendron bobsy might not be everybody's cup of tea that is the philodendron totem now this is getting pretty popular on facebook and pretty popular on instagram at the minute obviously the foliage is I would almost describe it as palm-like. It's pretty minimal. It's pretty nice. The new leaves unfurl really cool as well. If you go and Google that and have a look, they're really, really nice when they unfurl. They unfurl a beautiful pink color. All round nice plant. Now they're not gonna be insanely easy to get this year, but I am seeing some in nurseries. So I can't speak to what extent they're gonna come onto the market, but I know they're coming. And I don't think these plants were really around last year this time. I certainly don't remember anybody speaking about them. So in terms of this plant, it is still relatively new, but it's coming. You feel me? I think it's quite nice. Again, not everybody's probably looking for this kind of philodendron. I feel like this is a very specific look that you're going for if you want this plant, but it is a very nice plant and I'm told that they're not super fussy. So that's always good as well. Okay, this plant is going to be big this year. It just is, it's gonna be huge and it's still gonna have a price tag but I'm really excited to let you know that this plant is coming onto the market and it's never really been on the market as such. This plant has kind of been sold between collectors and you kind of got to know a guy and get a cutting and that kind of thing. You know, we, we were at that point last year, but I'm pleased to confirm that yellow variegated Monstera are coming. And I mean it, they are coming. Now they will still have a hefty price tag because the Albo Monstera still has a hefty price tag. That's the white variegated Monstera. So don't expect a bargain on these things at all. They're really pretty plants. I actually have a little cutting of one. You can expect basically the same thing as with a white variegated Monstera, only in my experience, they do grow quite a bit slower. Like there is a noticeable difference between my white variegated Monstera and the yellow one, but don't let that put you off because they're super awesome. And if you are collecting Monstera and if you are collecting variegated Monstera, this is 100% a plant you're going to want to look for. So I'm really excited to see it emerge on the market this year. The next upcoming plant for 2020 is also a plant that was around last year, but it was not around to the extent that it perhaps is going to be this year. And that is the Philodendron Ring of Fire. I used to own one of these, but I actually got rid of it before I moved into this flat where I live now. Variegation can range from a kind of orangey color to a white color. So they are really, really nice plants really interesting you know appearance they're almost fern like in kind of a way really nice to add to your collection if you're looking for something that's just not typically how philodendrons kind of look really really nice one i do predict you're going to see a lot of these this year not insane amounts but definitely a few more popping onto the market than last year so if you missed out last year now is your chance this year you may just find what you're looking for in these plants the next upcoming plant in 2020 is something that has been available last year. There weren't a lot of them about, but honestly, probably due to how quick they are to propagate, there are a lot more coming this year. So if you are looking for one of these, you're gonna have a much easier time. And that is the variegated white Syngonium. Now I will say very quickly, these are also coming out in yellow, so yellow variegation. That is more expensive because, as I mentioned before, this year, yellow variegated things are becoming more expensive than white variegated things. Who'd have thought, to be honest, I always thought that white variegation was really going to hold its own and people weren't really going to sway over to the yellow side, but there you go. So these plants, as I mentioned before, are genuinely very quick to grow. They're very easy to propagate and they're just generally all around a reasonably easy house plant. I've got one of these from a video I just did on shipping plants and you can grow them like this and keep them a little bit more arid -y 
or if you really let them grow, they start to trail and vine. So you can kind of choose how you want them to appear based on how much you kind of groom them. Okay, the next plant is another relatively new plant on the market. And honestly, I got two of these in my shop the other week and they are just the prettiest, prettiest plants. Honestly, photos of these plants don't do them justice. When you see them in person, they look 10 times nicer, I promise you. And that is the Philodendron Domesticum variegata. Trust me, these look brilliant. They do have a bit of a price tag on them. Obviously, it's variegation. That's just kind of how it is but they're really, really nice plants. Not only that, they grow pretty easy, can confirm. They really gave me no problems. I've had zero issues with them and that's even after shipping them in. Just no issues at all. Really, really easy plants to grow. Best of all, these plants are climbers, so you can mount these on a pole. If you want something really nice and variegated that climbs, this is absolutely one that you might want to consider getting. It's really, really nice. I do expect to see this surfacing a lot this year. I expect to see this a lot on Instagram. I expect this to be a reasonably coveted plant. These plants are so pretty, honestly. The next up and coming plant in 2020 has been around before, but I think it may be a lot more available now. And that is the Philodendron Burley Marks Variegata. Yes, another yellow variegated plant. So this plant was available last year. You could get it if you looked hard enough. I don't know in how high demand it was. All I can tell you is it's going to come onto the market this year. So you shouldn't have too many problems if you're wanting to buy one. They don't ship amazing in my experience. They really don't. I know they look like they should, but they just kind of don't. Don't let that put you off because these plants recover fine. That's not the problem. The problem is literally just the shipping process just kind of wilts them a bit and they just don't look great. Probably due to the fact that the leaves are very, very thin. So they're not amazing when they travel, but they are worth it and they do recover. It's really not something to worry about. It's just kind of like a word of caution. So just be extra careful when you do get it home after you've bought it. They're reasonably easy to propagate as well. So an all round cute little plant if you're looking for something very and you don't want something absolutely massive. You can keep this plant smaller a lot more easily than a lot of other philodendron. Another plant that is way more popular than it was last year, and it was popular last year, that is the Philodendron Florida Beauty. Now this is a beautiful, beautiful plant. I don't think you can see it on camera, but in the corner there, where my finger is kind of pointing, I have some Florida Beauty cuttings actually rooting. I don't know how well you can see that. These plants root really slow. So if you're wanting to buy one of these and you're looking to take cuttings, word of caution, they don't root very fast. They really don't. And that's not the first time I've experienced that. Not really related, but just in case you wanted to know how quickly they root, they root kind of slow. But they are beautiful plants. They're becoming very very desirable and the demand for these plants is really starting to go up probably again because they are climbers so you can save space and they have really beautiful variegation they have really beautiful leaves the leaves from a juvenile plant to a mature plant change you know the shape changes quite a lot it's really quite pretty to watch they're just all around nice plants and i'm not really surprised that they're taken off this year i think it's kind of a natural progression they will have a price tag though. They will have a price tag that's one thing i will say because the demand has gone right up the price tag it it's it's up there. It is up there. So please bear that in mind when you're looking for one. It's, it might sting a little bit. The next up and coming plant in 2020 is the Philodendron 69686. Yes, that is its name. So this Philodendron is kind of a dupe for Philodendron UPI, if you didn't already know. Not 100%, but it's kind of similar. It's very reminiscent of, so if you like the idea of a Philodendron UPI, but you really don't want to spend that cash, this is probably a plant to hunt for, to be quite honest. They're reasonably easy to grow as well. I have some of these in my shop. They're really not any trouble at all. Really nice plants, to be honest. Really cool leaf shape. Admittedly, again, leaves like this aren't every everybody's cup of tea with plants but if you are looking for something a little bit more unique then this plant is probably a good one. So the next plant on my list is probably going to be a big deal either this year or next year and I say this because this plant when it is young compared to when it is mature is like night and day. There is just no relation. This plant undergoes one of the most interesting transformations I've ever even read about for a plant. It starts off very cute. It starts off similar to a plant that we know and love and it changes into something else entirely. And I can't wait to see what happens. So I had to get one for myself. This is 
philodendron lupinum and basically i'll explain this in the best way i can this plant starts off looking just like this this is a juvenile one right here i can show you the back of the leaves there like that really soft velvety leaves and a lovely burgundy back and it's obviously a viner that's kind of what this plant looks like when it's juvenile but honestly if I were to show you what this plant looks like when it's mature, you wouldn't believe it was the same plant. Like, I bought what I knew to be a philodendron lupinum, and I thought I got the wrong plant, and I had to look it up, and then I realised what the score was. This plant was on my rare plant wish list in December, and what I was looking for when I made that wish list, I was looking at the mature form. So this, when it grows, will change completely. When this grows, this plant will lose all velvetiness, and all of its shape. This plant will have the biggest, most beautiful lobes or ears on its leaves, and it will be very long, and it becomes glossy. It's not even velvety anymore. So it goes from this to the picture that I am showing you beside me on the screen, which no doubt is from NSA Tropicals. That is not my image, just to let you know in advance. It's the best image I can find of a mature lupinum though, because not many places have the mature ones yet. So if you're looking for philodendron lupinum, it is high chance you're going to find something closer to these. You're not going to see the mature form yet, but I promise you this is philodendron lupinum and you will get the plant that you see there. It's just going to take some time. This is going to be a thing. I'm telling you right now, this is going to be a thing and I'm very excited. The next plant that is up and coming in 2020 is a very misunderstood and misperceived plant. It was around last year. It had a hefty price tag. It still kind of does but a lot more of these are coming onto the market because they're a little bit easier to propagate. So I predict the price on these is definitely, definitely gonna go down. That plant is the Epipremnum pinnatum variegata. Now, so many people think this is a pothos. It is not a pothos. I repeat, it is not a pothos. This is Epipremnum pinnatum variegata. And I don't actually understand personally why this plant doesn't have way more press. I really don't get it. It could be because most plants that are sold are very juvenile and they look very different and they do kind of look like a regular pothos. Maybe that's where, you know, the source of all the confusion is. But when these plants get bigger, they look so much, they look so reminiscent of white variegated monstera. They are just so gorgeous. You can grow them in exactly the same way. You can grow them up a pole. They will climb it. They will fenestrate. They will look absolutely beautiful. I do not understand why this plant hasn't taken off. But I think this year might be the year it takes off. I'm making a prediction right now. This plant is going to start being everywhere. I'd like to hope that we see more mature specimens of this sold because it'll probably raise awareness of how cool this plant is. But I don't know. I always see juvenile specimens sold. I have several myself and they're still juvenile. So we will see what happens. But I am like 99% sure these are going to be a thing this year. And they're going to be so cool. And they deserve to be because they're so similar to variegated Monstera. So why shouldn't they be cool? The next plant has been around. Again, very difficult to get previously. Now it's going to become a little bit easier. I'm seeing this a lot more in nurseries. And this plant is awesome. I got mine from the International Allied Show last year. If you know what I'm talking about, you may, you may not. This is the Philodendron Jose Bono, also known as Philodendron Imbe. They are the same plant. I don't know if I pronounced that last name correctly, but you can see it written down and you can kind of see what I mean. So these plants are really awesome. The variegation on these plants, I can honestly liken them to a Thai constellation. That It is so similar in the way that it's not fully white. It's very speckled, very flecked, but it can still have patches of variegation. The variegation is so similar to a Thai, but the leaves are like big, big paddles. Like this plant can get big, no problem. So if you have a space in your home that you really want to occupy with something like really big and gives you like total jungle vibes, but you just, you've got a Thai constellation or you don't want one, or you just want something new and fashionable to put there, this one million percent is the plant to do that. They grow pretty fast as well. I've got several of these and they grow pretty well. I've had no problems with them. They're not fussy or anything like that. And the best part is you can actually buy pretty big specimens. You don't have to start with a small one. You can actually just go out and buy a massive one if that's what takes you. Really nice plant, total joy to keep. Totally recommend them if you're just looking for something with a little bit more booty.
And that actually concludes my list. That is 20 plants up and coming in 2020. I'd love to hear your opinions on what you think about all of the yellow variegated plants in that list. Honestly, there were more than that. I just didn't want to include so many because I thought, you know, this is just becoming a list of yellow variegated plants. I'm kind of excited to see yellow variegated things come onto the market because honestly, we all seem to be very fascinated with white variegation and there's nothing wrong with that. It's beautiful. I've got that everywhere in my house, love it. But it's kind of nice to see yellow make a comeback. It's nice. It's cool. It's something different. But it's not everybody's cup of tea. So let me know what you think of that in the comments. So what you think about any of these plants? Have I just smashed your wish list? Because that does tend to happen with these videos. People's wish lists just get absolutely hammered. So I do apologize for that if that has happened. I do. I really do sincerely apologize. But... We're all in quarantine. Now is the time to kind of go window shopping and plan ahead. Why not? If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, then feel free to hit that subscribe button. Really quick note, in addition to that, I have recently started up a second channel. This second channel is nothing to do with plants. So if that's what you're looking for, just completely ignore the link in the description. But if you're interested in videos that I may make about maybe hair, maybe makeup, maybe skincare, maybe just, just a bunch of random stuff that I haven't even decided on yet. If that is your thing, then please feel free to check out the channel below or alternatively, you can search for Kaylee Ellen Unfiltered. That is my second channel. And maybe I might see you there. Currently, I have a video up about how I did basically this to my hair. I did my own roots and my own toner. So if that for some reason interests you, then feel free to hop over and have a look at that. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Please have a great weekend, stay safe and stay at home. Bye guys.